What is up my dudes, it's Pac-Man here and today I'm bringing you guys the second entry to my Common Mistake series. If you haven't seen part one, I'd highly recommend you go check it out. There's some pretty helpful tips in there. For anyone that wants to, uh, I'll leave a link in the description. Today we're going to be covering off topics like vertical mistakes, crosshair placement, reloads and reload cancelling along with a few other topics. But uh, really quickly before we start, I just want to say a massive thank you to everyone for all the support I've received over the last few weeks. There's a ton of new people coming to the channel every day, uh, so to you guys I want to say welcome, um, and to those that have been here for a while I want to say thank you. Without you guys the show does not go on. So uh, without wasting any more time guys, let's get straight into it. Okay guys, so the first thing that I want to touch off today is basically a common vertical mistake that I see. Um, and that means that uh, what it is is basically anyone that plays Sledge, Zofia or Buck or anyone that's actually going to be opening up the, uh, the, the, the floor. Um, it's basically when you, you hit the floor and then continue to shoot um, like into the floor that you've just smacked out or, or bucked out like that. So the reason that this is an issue is that let's say if we know someone's underneath this floor right here. See the time it takes for me to actually get my gun out and start firing? It's a, it's a, it's a you know, it's second, it's the same as sprinting. It takes a little bit of time for you, your character to end that animation. That's a bad floor. It takes a little bit of time for your character to end that animation and start firing. And if someone's looking at you, you're very likely going to die. So let's say I get my drone out. Boom, boom, boom. See that there's someone underneath our uh, B-bomb. All right, I go to... Sledge the floor and take a shot at him before I can even start to fire. Um, I'm murdered. Thank you, Scotty, for helping me out with this. But um, you get murdered, right? So there's a better way to do it, and that's what I'm about to show you. Okay, guys, so one way to avoid this is basically like staying as Sledge, basically open up the ground and move off the hole, right? So that you're not exposed while you can't shoot back. So, same thing over here. If you know someone's in the doorway, you open up the ground but move off the hole so that the actual doorway player can't just shoot you straight away through the floor um open up the ground move away so if someone's still playing behind b-bomb you got a droner that's um that's taking it out hit it move off open this come back pre-fire right so it's a it's just a way to avoid it is to hit the ground but move off that line of sight i know that probably makes won't make too much sense but it's super important and it's probably the reason that you're dying when you're playing a sledge or buck okay guys so another way to avoid this is basically working in sync with the the sledge player or the buck player i know i'm jaeger by the way but it's just the way that online matches work you have to have a um one person on each team so bear with us imagine i'm an attacker so uh, let's say we know that the the call out is that there's someone behind b bum um i get sledge to open it up and I'm ADS ready to pre-fire. You can do this without actually having to, to, to ADS, um, or without having to wait for the, the floor to be open, but just to get a more accurate headshot and be able to line up your shot a little bit better and make sure that we secure the kill, um, having Sledge open it up with someone ADS uh, waiting is a, a far safer way and, and faster, and it's just better. It's a better way. I do understand it takes coordination. That's why if you're by yourself, I'd recommend doing what I mentioned just before about hitting the hole, stepping off the line of sight, opening another hole, and then maybe coming back to that line of sight. Um, but if you have a second partner, I come out here, uh, Big Scotty. Just sledge around there. Being ADS, ready to go for that doorway or whatever. You know, just being ADS as they um, as they sledge the hole, ready to take the shot. Okay guys, so the next thing that I want to speak to you about is um, crosshair placement, right? And so what do you think is wrong with the way that I'm running right now? Do you see any issues? I might be actually looking head height. I might be with my eyes. I might not be looking, but look where my crosshair is placed. It's always down at the ground, right? So you, you, you'll see this so often, people sprinting around the map, um, looking at the ground, uh, and it, your, your crosshair is just always off so that if you ever actually see someone, you have to straight away flick up and try and get to that crosshair placement level. Um, and yeah, like if you're, if you're solid mechanically, you will be able to aim up and just aim at that head level straight away. Do yourself a favor and just run around the map actually looking so that you're always kind of ready. Always have your crosshair kind of in the center of your screen um, and pre brace for, for head height. It's going to save you time. And to be honest, guys, most of the tips that I'm going to give you in this video and most tips that I kind of always give are very minute details, very small details, but realistically, it could be the reason that you're plateauing or it could be the reason that you're losing gunfights or, you know, it, you, you just want to stay solid. Um, fundamentally right and so another another kind of variation of poor crosshair placement is um, people that are holding 
like door frames, but they're not holding them. They're holding them like in between nothing, in between crouch and head. You're holding them for like chest level. So when you're looking at a door frame, right? Looking at the door frame, it's about three quarters of the way up the door frame, like just under usually is head height. Um, same thing with same thing with um, crouching. It's like in between one quarter and half, just under halfway. Um, so when you're holding a door frame. Like people that hold kind of doors like this or like, you know, like that, you're, you're aiming for the chest, you're kind of not aiming at anything. So if they come around the corner crouch speaking, you're going to miss them. If they come around the corner um, standing, you're going to hit them in the chest. And it's just micro, micro details that could potentially be losing you gunfights, especially if you're playing someone with solid mechanical skill that's going to be able to lock onto your head as soon as they peek the corner. So always aim for the head when you're hitting, um, or when you're, when you're watching door frames. Always aim for that like three quarter, a three quarter placement, right? And you'll you'll get to know that over time. But um, a big reason is why I think a lot of people aim kind of like this when they're expecting someone to come through a door frame is confidence. Uh, people don't have the confidence in themselves to, to land the headshots, obviously a smaller target, so they go for the body shots. But um, fuck the confidence. In the end of the day, it takes three bullets to the chest, three to four bullets to the chest, um, and it takes one bullet to the head. So you can miss two bullets around the head and hit the third and they're dead, right? So uh, always be aiming for that headshot. Um, it's gonna win your gunfights. Okay guys, so the next thing that I wanna touch on is reloading and reload canceling. Um, basically, to explain this, I'm just gonna show you. So Ash's gun spawns with 31 in the chamber. Oop. So if I spray this gun down to the ground, down to zero, it's gonna respawn with 30, and there's that extra little lever pull, right? And then if I wanna get that last bullet back, I'll reload again, this time there's no lever pull, it's about half a second shorter. So what you don't wanna do is spray all the way down to zero, what you do wanna do is try and give yourself, uh, you know, like anywhere from one to seven bullets or whatever, just don't go all the way down to zero. Um, and just learn the timing of, what it sounds like to empty a gun and just reload pr prior to that. Like you can, you can basically look at it and um, and know, and you can hear the sound of it over time. You'll you'll get used to that sound when you're kind of looking for it. You'll be able to to actually do it prior to emptying the clip whatsoever, right? So just don't empty, the, don't mag dump, don't drop the whole clip into whatever pre-fire that you're doing or any gunfight you're doing. Leave yourself a couple of bullets in the chamber, reload, and you're gonna get you're gonna get about half a second back on time, right? Another way to save a little bit of time uh, during um, yeah reloading is basically something called reload cancelling, right? Um, and this is when you shoot. So this is how long this actually takes, right? So when you when you're reloading, this is how long it takes to get out of the um, animation. But what you can do is as it's happening, sprint. You see, it's gone from 27 back to 31, but it didn't finish the animation. Again, just a very small, minute detail, but it will save you time. So try it again. Let's see, back to 31. <laughs> you just save yourself a little half second like less but in the end of the day like i said if you start incorporating all of these little things into your game you're going to save yourself time become a quicker faster player okay guys so next thing i want to talk about is basically rotate hole and rotate rotate placements um and to, just to be a little bit interactive and fun uh which side do you think is the better side to put a rotate hole on the middle or on the left so drop a comment, let me know which side you think is best and tell me why you think it's best. I'm about to explain it in my opinion anyway now. All right, so if you were to ask me personally, I would say it's best to have the rotate hole um, on the left side, right? And the reasoning is to that is basically this little position here is a pretty strong position to have um, as a defender, right? So especially if this wall is reinforced uh, along with along with um, that wall there, because you can watch the, the push in from hooker door, you can kind of contest someone on repel if they're playing out there. And um, yeah, it's just a, it's a pretty strong position overall and you don't want to rule yourself out. So if you have the rotate hole down the middle, all right, if you have the rotate hole, something like that in the middle, um, you can be seen the whole way back here, right? All the way back on uh, Aquari Aqua Balcony. So they can they can be ready to actually take you out from all the way here, or even just simply, um, you know, wide peeking uh, Aqua Double Doors, right? So that's why I would say you should put the rotate hole on the left. <clears throat> and this is kind of relevant to every bomb site. So there's there's specific uh, places that you should have rotate holes and there's places that you shouldn't. Like let's say if we're playing in on, um, uh, on penthouse um, having a rotate hole on this side to move through why do you think this probably isn't such a smart idea having the rotate hole on this side and say mirrors band it's because of uh, the window player right they can cut off that rotate and basically just force you into into this one site 
What you could do, though, is have the rotate hole on this side. All right. So that you can come out and surprise the window player. All right, so just be aware of that and think about that when you're making rotates. Um, I can make a video that kind of breaks down each map and, you know, do specific sites and best setups for each site. Um, I'm not even saying to specifically do this rotate. It's not even necessarily a great one, but just, just be aware that when you're making rotates, just try and not give the enemy an advantage or, or not pin yourself into a room and uh, defeat the purpose anyway. Okay guys, the final tip that I want to give you is basically um, when attacking, like you, you quite often see players that just kind of like dick around the bomb site, right? So let's, let's say they're playing first floor kitchen. Um, you quite often see like people kind of just like poking and prodding directly onto the bomb site, right? So they're just looking around, kind of waiting for people to do it, make people to make a move. You know, maybe they, maybe they, they drone in and there's someone there uh, behind B-bomb and they shoot their drone and then they kind of just, you know, they kind of just sit here and look around, maybe throw a flashbang in, you know, and they basically just sit there for, you know, two minutes of the round or two and a half minutes of the round. Same thing can go for, for any, I'm not saying that like holding, having pressure on kitchen windows is a bad thing, but same thing with service. Like you, you see people, they kind of just like, they're just like, him, like in and out of the the site maybe taking a bit of damage sometime and stuff like that and they're just kind of like looking at the site they spend like multiple minutes of a round doing so um it's 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 not a good habit to be completely honest with you unless you're there for a specific reason and you're working with the team then of course pressuring certain points um might be viable and might be the right thing um but spend your time doing stuff that's more productive like taking control of essential um portions right like you know i don't even have a drone but getting control of um a penthouse right when they're below so that's more productive that's a more productive way to spend your time so you can try and help get your sledge through and clear out from above and then maybe start to open up or like it doesn't even necessarily need to be that you can go through sunrise try and try and take control of parts of the map don't just poke and prod at the at the doorways where you know pretty damn well that you can't just run through there you're gonna get shot so you just kind of it's just wasting time and i see it all of the time Focus on the objective, not literally the, the objectives. Focus on what the objective of the round is. If uh, you and your team, like that's the call, you're gonna play from sunrise, then go from sunrise and help out with that. If you're gonna take from above, go through the hatch or go through, um, go through hooker and begin to take from above. Um, just focus on the objective and, and don't just sit kind of idly outside of bomb sites. And so there you have it, my friends. That's gonna do the video. I hope you guys found some um, some value in these tips. And um, once again, guys, I have to say thank you from the bottom of my heart for all the support you guys have been showing. Um, new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Please be sure to like and subscribe. I know like 85% of the people watching my video at the moment, um, they're not actually subscribed. So if you are enjoying the content or if you did enjoy the video, please smash that subscribe button. Um, and lastly, I really hope that everyone's still keeping safe. It's some pretty crazy shit going on out there. Um, so let's all do our part, stay inside, and uh, let's just smash some siege. So um, without wasting more time, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.